Oh, hey guys, it's me, your vault dwelling buddy, Tony. Uh, I'm out here looking for toilets to drink out of because if the Fallout games have taught me anything is that drinking out of toilets is rad. Gives you rads? I'm not sure what the difference is. It's today in nerd history. Today in nerd history. The painful elimination of 90% of Earth's population is a pretty grim way to start any story, but Fallout knows how to just keep on giving, and Fallout 4 is no exception. The Commonwealth isn't just a miserable place, it's a creepy, weird, and unsettling place as well. Here are the five creepiest places in Fallout 4. Number five, the Pikmin Gallery. The Commonwealth is no stranger to violence, and not just because Fallout 4 basically made violence mandatory this time around, but still, there's no place so unexpectedly gruesome as the Pikmin Gallery. With the simple red door and unassuming name like Pikmin Gallery, you might expect some colorful Nintendo plant aliens and black turtlenecks discussing the finer points of Rembrandt. Instead, you get something that's slightly more disturbing. Gore galore. In the Pikmin Gallery, the human body is canvas, paint, and whatever it is conceptual art students pile into a corner and call art. And you know, while I respect the guy's tenacity, this is some real undergrad art student level stuff. I guess this is the kind of thing that Pikmin would turn into his teacher and explain is actually a treatise on the irony of American consumer culture. But hey, at least it's not the classic tampon in a teacup trick. In the gallery, you can find a can of the artist's paint, as well as fresh bodies of raiders with notes indicating that they've been lured down with the promise of checking out some highbrow chin rubbin' art. And toward the end of the gallery, you can save what appears to be a civilian from some attacking raiders. This, of course, turns out to be Pikmin himself. Named after the H.P. Lovecraft short story, Pikmin's Model, in which a disturbed artist creates ghastly paintings. And you're left with the horror of knowing that you let this guy get away with all of his sophomoric bullshit art for another day. Oh, and you know, also all the murder. Whatever. Number four, terrifying mannequins. When I was like 10, my mom gave a mannequin to my dad for his birthday by like putting a blindfold on him, walking him within an inch of its face and then pulling the cloth off. And he like lost his mind because you know, mannequins, they're terrifying. So it's no surprise that Fallout 4 uses mannequins as shorthand for terror and includes them everywhere. They're eerie, they're often mistaken for enemies. Some people even revile them so much that they've modded them to be replaced with lawn flamingos. But as prevalent as they are in the game, nothing tops the creepiness of this scene. This sucker died in bed with his best mannequin lady by his side. Seems kind of nice. At least you didn't have to go out alone, right? But then you check out the bathroom. Oh, look at that an actual human corpse in the bathtub, or most of it at least, the head is in the toilet, it's too big to flush, clearly, and the tub is surrounded by mannequins with machetes. Did that guy we found in bed off his wife then try to blame it on mannequins and then guiltily try and replace her with a dummy bride? Or did something more sinister happen? The lizard part of our brains knows that something dark and evil lurks behind those mannequins' glass eyes. Just ask my dad. True story. Number three, Hallucigen Inc. So here's this building called Hallucigen Incorporated, and I know what you're thinking, it would be way too on the nose for it to be filled with drugs that make people flip out. And yet, when you enter, there is green gas everywhere, and as you trudge forward, you begin to hear the distant sounds of battle. But when you find where the screens and gunfire are coming from, it's gunner raiders tearing up other gunner raiders. This isn't so bad until you realize that these gunners are in testing stations, stations that existed before the war. Meaning, in our bright and shiny 1950s style fallout past, government reps or even private citizens were going to a building plainly visible on city streets and given the opportunity to press a button that made actual live people start killing each other. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we deserve the apocalypse. Number two, Parsons State Insane Asylum. An insane asylum seems like pretty standard fare for the creepy deepy stuff, but Bethesda still knows how to turn things on the rear. While you might expect a dilapidated, wet, rundown, spooky hellhole, Parsons State Insane Asylum offer you something weirder, the Cabot Home, which is completely, inexplicably, Normal. In an apocalyptic future, nothing is more troubling than a place that has no supposed troubles. And that's exactly the case with the home of Jack, Imogen, and Wilhelmina Cabin. And fitting for an insane asylum, the horror that awaits us here is a little more cerebral. These three are all over 400 years old, sustaining themselves indefinitely off of the blood of Lorenzo Cabin, who was gifted eternal life and a case of the pow pow zoom zoom go bananas by a mysterious artifact. I guess somebody should have just told these guys about save spamming, because this is a Bethesda RPG after all. Hey. Ultimately, you get to check out Lorenzo's crib and his rad immortality hat, and it's completely up to you what happens to the Cabot bloodline. 
Number one, Dunwich Borers. When you see the word Dunwich, it's completely excusable if you involuntarily clench a particular orifice. Because the word is immediately reminiscent of H.P. Lovecraft's particular brand of ancient terror, and the Dunwich Borers mining site makes good on this implicit promise. The descent into the mining site is standard enough. You pick off cannon fodder raiders on your way down until you reach this terminal. The spirit of the Shining is alive and well in this entry from a raider named Bedlam. Something down here is driving people crazy. But things start to go really nuts when you start having flashes of hallucinations, first to pre-war miners, and then those miners worshipping some kind of creepy shrine. There's not too much to go off of until you see these ghouls, ghouls with human names. These aren't your typical feral monster ghouls, they're people that were driven mad by something dark something sinister. You may recall the Dunwich building in Fallout 3, which gives us another hint as to what's going on. Exploring the building, you find a bunch of ghouls worshipping an obelisk, much like something the borers may have recovered from the bottom of this mine. Again, knowing more about this mystery only raises more questions instead of tying everything neatly in a bow. And the scariest part of all of this? Well, it'll be at least 2020 before we find out more in Fallout 5. Alright, sayonara guys, I got a, I got a date with a porcelain princess name. Irradiated water. Yeah! Toilet, I mean. I'm gonna drink out of a toilet. Okay, bye!